Prize, prize. How's that? All right, guys, make sure you're following us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Are you guys ready to worship? Let's get up.
you're here with us this morning. I need to get down to business though, and I need you to answer a question for me. Who else out there is living with Corona hair, just don't care? I have not been able to go and get my hair did since February, and it is looking a mess. And then it turns out that my hairstylist is booked until June, and that's just not going to do. So I came up with the perfect alternative. My little helper is going to come out here. Come on out here, girlfriend. Now I can't get my roots done, but I can disguise it until then. Oh, gosh, I feel better already. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Thank you. KK said it was retro, but I don't care. Anyways, so as you know, we've been talking about determination. And even though 
I haven't been able to get my hair done, and I've been determined to do that. And there's a lot of things I haven't been able to do in the past few months. We all know there are four things here at Rich Kids that you can always do, and that is love God, love people, share the gospel, and be a great kid. So we all know that this was our last week of AMI, praise Jesus, and um, it's good that we all kept our determination. Remember, determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you've already started. So are you glad that you stuck with it and got it all done and was able to turn it in? Yes. Are you excited about just getting to go play and do some fun stuff this summer? Yes. Me too. So let's get right down to the big point. And Aubrey's going to help me here. Ready? Ta-da! Our big point is keep going because God knew the end of the story. So there's a lot of things that we start in our lives that we don't know how it's going to work out or, you know, if it's going to go our way and it could be scary, but we have to keep going because God knows what's best and he knows the end story. And that leads us into our big word. Are you ready? Ta-da! Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. So Pastor Amber is going to come up. She's going to go into God's word and explain to us a little bit more about how we can keep our determination. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Hey, Rage Kids. Today we are picking up in God's big story right where we left off. Today we're going to be talking about a man named Stephen. Now, Stephen, he lived during the time when the church was just getting started. So it wasn't very long after Jesus died and had come back to life and then went to heaven. As the church was growing, it was getting bigger and bigger, and there were more believers who needed food and special care. Peter and the apostles, they got together and they made a plan for these believers. Let's go to Acts 6 and see what they said. They said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so brothers, select seven men who are well-respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them, give them this responsibility. So Stephen, guys, was one of those people that were chosen. He was there to help care for the new believers and to make sure that they were fed and take care of their daily needs. You know, to kind of put it in perspective, so Stephen was kind of like what I imagine, like Miss Deb, who runs our pantry. She helps feed the people of the Ridge Church and the Pea Ridge community, and she helps take care of people's everyday needs. She is bold, and she is full of the Holy Spirit and God's wisdom, and she is determined in her calling to take care of those people. So that's exactly what Stephen, what his job was. So there were some people that tried to start an argument with Stephen, but the Holy Spirit gave him wisdom to answer them. And Stephen's enemies, they couldn't make him angry. So they decided that they were gonna start telling lies about him. That's not very nice at all, is it? They said that he was speaking against Moses and God, and this made the religious leaders very, very angry. So they arrested Stephen and brought him before their gathering that's called the Sanhedrin. They found people who were willing to lie and make up stories about Stephen. 
But even though Stephen was being treated so badly, he didn't look upset. He was determined. His face became as bright as an angel's. The high priest asked Stephen if the things that the people were saying about him were true. And God knew that he was with him. And Stephen knew that God was with him. He wanted the leaders to understand that Jesus was the one that they had been waiting for, that he was our savior who God had promised. Stephen started to tell the story of God's people. He talked about Abraham and Joseph and how God's people were slaves in Egypt. He told them of everything that God did through Moses to free the Israelites and bring them to the promised land. He spoke about King David, who loved God deeply and wanted to build him a beautiful temple. And then Stephen told them about Jesus, God's son. And it must have taken a lot of strength and courage, but Stephen didn't back down. Let's look at Acts 7 and see what he said. He said, name one prophet your ancestors didn't persecute. They even killed the ones who predicted the coming of the righteous one, the Messiah, Jesus, whom you betrayed and murdered. Stephen knew that Jesus was the perfect example of God's love, even if the religious leaders couldn't see it. The leaders were so angry. Stephen looked up and he saw a vision of heaven with Jesus standing at God's right hand. And he knew that God was with him. The religious leaders, they covered their ears and yelled in order to keep from hearing another word. They ran and grabbed Stephen and dragged him out of the city. And then they began to throw stones at him. Stephen's very last words were filled with love. In Acts 7, 60, it says that he fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. So it was a very sad ending, but Stephen knew that it wasn't really the end. You see, he would be able to go to heaven and be with Jesus forever. Jesus had told his followers to love everyone and to show the world what God's love looks like. Through God's power, Stephen continued to share God's love all the way to his very last breath. Can I get my big point? We can keep going because God knows the end of the story. Even when things were going so terribly for Stephen, he was able to keep going because he knew that God was with him. Stephen was determined. He trusted God. He decided to stand strong in what he believed. We don't always know how things will turn out. And sometimes we feel stuck because we feel like, Life just isn't going our way. But in any situation, we can trust God and remember that he knows the end of the story. Remember, you and I, we are all part of God's big story. God has always had a big plan for an even bigger story. Abraham, Moses, David, and all the people that we read about right here in our Bibles. They didn't know the end. But God does. He knows that the end of the story is good. Here's what we have to remember today, guys. Keep going because God knows the end of the story. When everything feels awful and you aren't sure what to do, talk to God. Talk to an adult that you trust about your feelings. Don't keep it to yourself. Keep going because God knows the end of your story. Guys, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, 
and you've never prayed and asked him to forgive you of your sins and you don't know what the end of your story looks like, then guys, I encourage you to find an adult, your parents, a relative, your small group leader, myself, come to us. We would love to talk to you and pray with you. Let's bow our heads and pray, guys. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for coming and showing us the perfect example of love. And Lord, we thank you that you always have our best interests and that you are always there to watch over us and to protect us and that no matter what happens, that you are there with us and that we can trust you no matter what. And Lord, we know that you know the end of our story, Lord. Please just keep reminding us of that and give us the wisdom and the boldness and the strength to go forward and to be decisive and determined in our beliefs, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would just watch over each of us as we go throughout our week, Lord, and that you would just give us little reminders every day that you're in control and that we can trust you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, Reach Kids, sorry. Aubrey and I were fixing my hair. It took a while, but look at this amazing job she did. Uh, we, we snuck back in because Pastor Amber left. As you all know, we are building up to the big reunion, celebration, slimification of Pastor Amber. Right now, we got 62 photos, and we said at 75 that we would slime her. So we really got to get the rest of those photos in this week. Aubrey, are you going to be putting in your photos? Yes. Are you excited about sliming Pastor Amber? Yes. All right, guys. Let's not let's not let this one go. Determination. We have to make sure that she gets slimed. We'll see you here soon. Bye.